Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to learn any weapon in Monster Hunter that you want really, 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 really fast. All right, so what most people do is they'll go on YouTube and they'll find a guide. And I, I think the guides on YouTube are actually very good, but the retention from these guides is uh, not so good because they throw a lot of stuff at you at once. And uh, th there's a time and place for the guide, but this is how I would recommend learning a weapon especially if you want to learn it really fast. All right, I'm going to do this for Switch Axe. First thing I'm going to do is always look in the top right corner. The top right corner is going to tell me every possible combination that I can do from any given state that the weapon's in. All right, so I'm just standing here and I have a Y, which is a side slash. I have a YB, which is something. I have a B, which is something. And I have a RT, which is morph, which is something. So what you're going to do is you're going to just try everything out and just keep looking in the right hand corner and see how that changes with every action. All right, so if I press Y, then there's other things that change, like my YB disappeared, uh, my Y turned into something else, my B turned into something else. All right, so if I press Y again, so I can see I have a, a combination of like Ys and Bs, and then at some point there was like a B and a back thing, right? So if I press, oh, okay, B and left stick back, that's a fade slash. All right, so let's try that out. So let's try, ooh, okay. And then every time I do a move, I'm always kind of making notes as to what are the properties of that move. So like how fast does it take to do it? How deep into the combo do I have to be to get to that move? And also how much damage you're doing. But the damage, uh, we'll save that for later. Don't look at, don't focus on the damage right now. Just focus on the timing that it takes to do each thing. All right, so if I just do Y combos, yeah. the side, rising, and overhead. And that takes a lot of time to do, right? If the monster's attacking really fast, all I can really do is this side slash. All right, and if I'm moving and I press Y, oh, I'll do a thrust instead. That's pretty fast, at least compared to a lot of things in the move set. All right, so if I do Y three times, side, up, down, side, up, down. Okay, so that's, uh, you know, it repeats, but it's pretty slow. That, you know, these are the mental notes I'm making. All right, let's try, let's try that thrust again. Thrust, down. All right, so this is pretty fast. It's like a two-bit combo. All right, interesting. All right, let's try uh, YB, Rising Slash. And then follow that up. Okay, so it's, it's like an up-down thing. It's just a two-hit combo. Up, down, long reach, hit high. Now let's try to touch damage. 14, 34. The overhead does a little bit more, okay, but it doesn't seem like that much. Interesting. Let's compare it to the Y combo. Side, up. That's weak, weak. Okay, that one's a little stronger, the third hit. Let's try the two hit combo with the thrust. Up, down. Okay, so that, you know, that 34 damage from the down hit is pretty big, at least compared to the other hits. So the conclusion I'm coming to this weapon is that every time there's a downward hit, it seems that hit is stronger than the others. But that downward hit is always locked behind other weaker moves. So I have to do like these weak moves first, then I can do this down hit to get to that strong hit. All right, so that uh, seems to be the Y stuff. All right, let's try to press B. All right, this was interesting. So I pressed B and I did two hits. So when you're training, don't spam buttons. Like if I'm pressing Y, don't just keep pressing Y like I'm doing right now. You want to try see what each dedicated press in the move does. So let's go back to B. If I press B once and stop doing anything. So it does two hits. So Wild Swing is actually two hits by just pressing B once. Okay, let's try press B again after that. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. I only pressed B twice, but three hits came out. Two on the first hit and one on the third hit. One, two, three, and I can just keep doing this apparently. But notice my stamina keeps going down. Okay, that's interesting. You know, I can only do it as long as I have stamina. And also, again, I'm making notes with the timing. So if I just keep doing this, I really don't have enough time to just keep doing this. The monster is on its feet and attacking me back, right? So is that really useful in most situations? I don't know. I, I don't really think so. Maybe if the monster's down. You know, I'm just making all these... Uh, notes in my head. All right, so if I just keep doing this, then it says I can do Y after heavy slam. Okay, that did quite a bit of damage, but I noticed something when I was looking in the top right corner. It doesn't really come out right away, that heavy slam with the Y. So let's try one, two. Okay, I have to do, I have to do the three wild swings, so two B presses, and then I have to press Y to do the overhead slam, because if I just do, do it once, one, two, I just get this overhead slash, which was this thing right here. Okay, so it, you know, it's not as strong. I, I want to test the damage one more time. One, two, three, let's try that heavy slam. 55, okay, that's a lot more damage than the, uh, the overhead swing with the Y. I'm making a note that, hey, it takes actually a lot of effort to get into that overhead slam, right? So I have to do these three hits, 
three, four or more, three or more, and then I have to do overhead time. And then, you know, that takes a while. So, you know, there's a trade off there. I'm not really going to get that, but if I, there's an opportunity to get that overhead slam, then yeah, I should probably go for it. But I would say 70% of the time, I'm not really going to be doing that. All right, let's try the more thing. Okay, that just, I don't think that did any damage. <laughs> let's, 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 let's uh, unsheath and let's try more again. Okay, that, that actually does not do damage. Interesting. Okay. What if I try to press R trigger from a sheath state? Y or RT, draw weapon. Okay, if I can get into sword mode from unsheath, and that actually is a hit. So that's like a, a draw slash, right? So I'm running around, monster does the attack, and then, okay, I press RT, I get to sword mode right away and do a draw slash that way. Okay, interesting. So let's say we're in sword mode state. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, let's just start with Y. We'll just start with that. Oh, okay, so there's a right, left, and an overhead. Overhead, right, left, overhead, right, left, overhead. So it goes overhead, right, left, and then that repeats. Overhead, right, left, overhead, right, left, overhead. Okay, now that's the thing about switch, switch axe is uh, if you run out of meter, then you can't use sword mode anymore. Okay, that's interesting. So if I have question, if I'm starting to have questions about the weapon, then I'm going to go into hundred notes and then just read. It literally tells us stuff right here. So switch axe can be switched to switch sword mode when the switch gate is above the white marker. Okay, interesting. So it seems like if I don't have enough gauge in that top left corner of that bar meter, then I cannot use sword attacks. Okay, that's that's interesting. So let's just uh, try spend it all. Let's see what happens. Let's just confirm. So my meter's going down with each swing. Meter's completely depleted, and I switch back to axe mode. Okay, interesting. So I need gauge. Well, let's look at the gauge then. Okay, gauge is slowly, it seems to be slowly refilling on its own. And it seems to be refilling when I have my axe out. So it refills on its own. Does it refill on hits? I think in Sunbreaker it refills on hits, but... It doesn't seem to be refilling on hits. So it just I just have to wait, either in sheath or axe mode. Okay, interesting. All right, so we had a three-hit combo with the Ys. Let's try B. Okay, so that's kind of like the axe mode, the wild swing, where if I press B once, it does two hits. And that says double slash right there, so that makes sense. All right, interesting. Now let's try press B again after that. Okay, that's a pretty big animation. It's another two-hit thing. And it doesn't seem like it does that much damage, to be honest. Like, if we go back to sword mode, we press this, that's 12 and 6 damage, and there's a little extra damage that comes out. Interesting. Alright, let's press this. 16, 17. I don't know, it kind of does the same amount of damage. 15, 17. It really doesn't seem like it's doing that much damage. But it seems to be increasing that outline of my switch gauge with every sword hit. So that's interesting. Okay, that does a lot of refilling of that second gauge. Let's try read about that real quick. All right, amp state. Additional attacks and sword mode will cause files enter amp state. Strengthen your sword attacks. I think that's what that second outline gauge is. So when I land sword attacks, I build that second gauge. So I spend the first gauge to build the second gauge. Okay, that's what's going on. And I and it said amp state, so if I'm fully, you know, get that, then I, I guess I'm in the amp state. And uh, TLDR, when you're in amp state, it does those file, extra file damage attacks when you do sword mode. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to try, okay, RT, let's try to press RT. So I just press RT by itself, it just, it's the same thing, it doesn't do an attack, it just switches back to axe mode. Let's get back to sword mode, and then let's try to press RT after an attack. Ah, interesting, okay, so it's a morph attack, so it morphs and attacks at the same time. It doesn't seem that strong, but it seems pretty fast as well. Let's try to press YB. Okay, interesting. If I keep pressing Y, if I press YB, then it does all that uh, exploding stuff. Okay, cool. And I'm going to assume that's a, a big hit because it, it takes a lot of time to do and it did quite a bit of damage. Also, I also noticed the spend gauge in the left. Okay, interesting. So let's uh, let's try see test the evading and defensive properties of this weapon. All right, so I press B. It seems like I hop instead of rolling as if I'm using a lance. Oh, that's a backwards roll. Interesting. Okay. So I can only hop side to side. It seems. All right, let's try sword mode then. Okay, hop. Can I... Okay, I can actually hop back in sword mode. Interesting. Can I hop forward? 
Okay, so there's a lot of maneuverability. I can maneuver in four directions with that hop in sword mode, but not in axe mode. Interesting. Okay, let's try it after B. Okay, so same same deal, the same thing. I'm just hop around, and then after I hop, I will roll instead. Okay, so you can only hop once. Okay, interesting. So my conclusion is, if I want to get a quick 1.5 punisher in, really only going to be using pressing Y once, either for that thrust or for this side attack in axe mode. Like if I do this heavy swing thing, that's a heavy commitment. Even just pressing B once, this is a pretty heavy commitment. All right. And in sword mode, my conclusion is, okay, well, you know, I can really only hit Y once, maybe twice if there's a slightly bigger opening. I could hit B for this couple slash, but it's still pretty hefty. You know, um, if the monster's going to retaliate, I really don't have that much time for this. But it seems my conclusion is this actually fills the outline gauge or the second gauge pretty fast. So if I get a chance to use this, I should use this. Even though the damage isn't that good, then yeah, I should use this. And then when I get a chance in sword mode, then I should press this. This seems to be a lot of damage. Now there's one more thing I saw in sword mode, and it was some sort of fate slash similar to the fate slash in axe mode. So let's see what it says. Okay, in the top right it says left stick back and right trigger. So let's try to press that. Fate slash, it's a retreating attack, but I not only retreat, but I transform into axe mode and it does some damage as well. Okay, so it's uh, more of a defensive thing. All right, after I exhausted as many moves as possible in the top right, then I'm gonna go to Hunter Nodes just to kind of review, make sure I uh, understand everything uh, that I've discovered on my own. Standard attack, okay, these are, okay, these are axe mode. So standard attack, Y, we had Wild Saying repeatedly. Yeah, that makes sense. I could keep doing that forever. YB, Rising Slash, yeah, I did that. Advancing Slash, oh, I actually didn't do that. Let's try Let's try that out. Left, left stick and B. All right, so if I'm in axe mode and then I, oh, well, that's like the same thing. Okay, B, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so left stick and Y and left stick and B. It's the same thing. Okay, interesting. All right, so we go back to our notes. We, we check that out. RT, Morph, yeah, we know that. And we have Clutch Claw and Slinger abilities as well. Okay, let's go to Sword. Let's just kind of confirm standard attack, Y, and then we could do like multiple combos. Like I think it was a three hit combo with the Y. And we had B, Strong Attack, and that was a double slash. And then uh, we could press B again for that the, the Flurry attack, which is uh, again, a hefty animation, but we've established that B attacks fill the outer gauge or the second gauge faster than the Y attacks. Okay, YB, Elden Discharge, that's my big finisher. RT morph, and you know, depending on different states, I could use the morph into a morph slash, and not only morph, but get an attack in. And then we have other slinger stuff as well. And then here's some useful combos, and uh, just, you know, we already did them really. So we're just kind of just double checking. Okay, Y combos with Axe, B combos with B. Again, all of these are very hefty animation commitments. I really don't think I'm gonna be doing much of these when the monster is attacking back consistently in, in rage mode. Here's some, uh, there's a wild swing. Oh yeah, the wild swing into heavy slam. We've established the heavy slam does a lot of damage. But it's, again, a very hefty animation lock. Takes a long time to do. So probably not going to do it that much. So we actually know like 80% of the weapon right now. Now, this is where you go onto YouTube and you find a guide that tells you all the different nuances of the weapon. Because now I have the basic knowledge that when I go to a YouTube video guide on the Switch Axe, I'm going to pick up so much more. I'm going to absorb so much more from that video because you know when they're talking about like all these basic why stops like yeah yeah yeah, i know that i know that i know that i know that but then when the youtuber talks about something very specific about the weapon like whether it's related to the gauge or um the finishers and all that kind of stuff then i can add that to my knowledge while at the same time combining that knowledge with what i already know with the weapon like i know that these y combos are very slow and I really don't, I'm not going to get that much attacks off. If I'm playing single player, the most I can get off is just one attack from these uh, Y combos or even this B combo. I, I don't think I'm going to be doing that that often in single player. In sword mode, same thing, you know, I can I can get these uh, Y attacks off. They're pretty fast, but I can only get one or two off. And I want to get this B attack off to build gauge, but, you know, I really have to find the right opening for that. By getting first-hand experience first before you watch a YouTube video, you'll absorb so much more from a YouTuber's guide. That's how you learn the weapons really fast. You establish how long it takes to do each move and identify which moves are going to be your 1.5 punishers, you know, your standard punishers. You can learn the combos. Just be aware you're not going to be doing that every single time. You're only really going to be doing that when you have a big opening, which is not that often. It's really only 30% of the time you're going to have these big openings to do these longer string combos. If you do it this way, you'll learn a lot faster compared to just watching a YouTube video first. Go into training room first. Just get all the moves out in the top right corner out of your system. 
so you have some baseline to work with, then you go watch a YouTube video that will really iron in all the details of that weapon. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Hope it helped. And thanks for watching.